Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Bill Heck about I Know What You Did Last Summer, which is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Peter. Nice to be here. I mean, it. This 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 interview is, I think, like a year and a bit in the making. So I'm glad we were able to. <laughs> is there's this, like this long history of Twitter DMs, uh, <laughs> <laughs> cross we're... paths, never. <laughs> yeah, we're we're long here now, coming. which is awesome. The show's on Amazon Prime. Uh, yes. You know, a couple of things right off the bat, Bill. I mean, uh, you know, I know what we did last summer, an iconic film series in the horror thriller genre so there's that aspect of it there's the aspect that the horror thriller genre is huge right now um so that kind of combined of like i know what you did last summer the film series and how big the genre is what's the right. mindset for you like when you sign on to be on the series for this show uh the mindset is uh uh i get to be in hawaii yeah <laughs> okay, okay. That's no I, no no, uh, no i mean that was fantastic um uh, you know, I I, uh, I I'm aware of the weight that comes with that the the huge pop following. You know how um, uh, woven into the fabric of our pop culture the slasher genre is this uh, property in particular. Um, how there's sort of a resurgence and appreciation for a, a sort of retro thriller yeah. uh, experience. Um, so you know you part of you wants to wants to enter it into it just um uh, making sure you don't fuck it up yeah and uh <laughs> but but ultimately you gotta sort of shed, shed shed all expectations you know there's no there's no way to meet them really you know if you try and and appease uh, a very specific sort of fandom you're inevitably gonna fail mm -hmm. so um and, and also that's not uh that's not um a useful way to to tell a story or you oh, know absolutely so, and and it's and and it's it's it exists yeah. you know so so um i think actually the the benefit of it being a series as opposed to like a, a feature length reboot yeah is it asks different things of you right so you have a, a launching point um you know some context to inspire you perhaps um yeah. And then uh, for a series, you, you know, you, you you don't want to just like pound away at a feature length story over eight hours of television episodes, because yeah. um, that would be more horrific than any murder. Um, so uh, Sarah Goodman, the showrunner, I think had the right idea where now we have this extra space. So it allows you to, to delve into the horror like within the human experience of these characters and really develop uh, what lies beneath and how scary that can also be. Um, and ideally that fleshes out the, the terror of the gore or the, the, you know, the horror of not knowing yeah. who's outside your window at night um, uh, in, con in the context of the horror of not, not knowing what lurks beneath your oh, very soul. You know what I mean? No, for sure. And and I find it very interesting. We're going to get specifically into your character on the show because your char I, I love your character on the show and I think you do an amazing job. And I do have some questions about that specifically. But I find it interesting because one can make an argument that I know what you did last summer on Amazon Prime is a, a genre bending show. I honestly think that because I think there's a lot of things that are thrown in there. There's the horror, there's the thriller, there's a lot right. kind of happening. You were also on season one of Lock and Key on Netflix, which I also think is one of those genre bending shows that right, kind of throws right. in a lot of elements. Obviously, Bill Heck goes where the opportunities go, but is it safe to say that Bill Heck is also drawn towards these genre bending projects that kind of push the envelope or aren't afraid to stay in a box? That's interesting. Uh Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think in a very general sense, you could say I'm, I'm uh, more interested in a challenge than an easy get. Um, and uh, not that I'm unique in that regard, but I think that's what keeps anyone interested. And certainly uh, I'm a fan of a genre piece. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a young boy myself and have pulled that all the way through into my middle age. Um, so uh so it's fun to enter those worlds that ask a little 
more of you that are not afraid to to either peek into the supernatural in the case of lock and key or um into a, a heightened sense of of um violence yep. uh and and terror um but also to say well what else is in there you know uh not only how far can we expand the genre itself and what possibilities that that allows but how you know the challenge is to keep that grounded within that an actual human experience instead of just getting off on magic full stop yeah. no absolutely uh, and so so that's always an interesting exercise oh, you know, for how, sure how far can you take it or raise the stakes that is totally true. And I just, I love it because I, it's so interesting to me because like Lock and Key and I have a lot of friends on that show as well. I mean, it, it's just, you, they just blend so many things and they just throw so many things and elements and genres in there. And I, I feel like yeah. the same move I know we did last summer. I think I know we did last summer is more doing this really interesting thing of the traditional kind of aspects of horror and thriller that are yeah. there. But it's also right. incorporating kind of new things because there's different ways to scare people these days, Bill. Like it's <laughs> like people true. are scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's you no, know, that's a really valid point. Which is sure. amazing. Your character, yeah. obviously, you know, in the beginning of the series, you know, is privy to information that other people are not privy to in the, mm -hmm. in the beginning, and kind of has yes. to keep some secrets and everything. There's a lot of complicated characters in this show. There's a lot of misunderstood characters. Is it safe to say, though, that, you know, you look at these characters that have all these secrets and have a lot to hide? Um, is that an interesting thing for you as a storyteller to kind of look at the script and look at all these characters that have a lot to hide and have a lot going on and then translating it to the screen? Like, what's that kind of like for you, kind of seeing it on script they're misunderstood. They got a lot of secrets, and then right. boom, you got to go and work and put it on 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 the screen. What's that like for you? Uh, well, that makes me think of, of two things. Uh, the first being that sort of uh, very general trick or exercise in when you're engaging in, in acting in any story is that you know everybody's got their secret, and it can sometimes be a useful endeavor to whether it's provided in the material or not, imagine what uh, your character's secret might be. You know, we, we all have things going on uh, that we're not addressing immediately in the moment, things we hope maybe nobody knows about or, yep. or what have you. So that that helps uh, stoke a, a flame underneath that keeps, keeps a character alive um, beyond the context of any specific scene. So that's always useful. When that is provided or explored by the material it becomes that much more of a, a game um uh you know and is a, a credit to whoever's creating the material yeah. uh also with with i know what you did last summer uh we were a bit building the plane in flight you know where i i came in to start shooting i think i had the first maybe three episodes wow and uh so we were sort of kicking it off having some uh some absence of information mm -hmm. which on one hand is completely maddening and on the other hand it's like really fun and to see you know how you can uh twist twist and turn yourself through the process what new information will do to the past context of scenes how to inform your uh, journey moving forward so yeah. uh, it was sort of a fun uh, a bit of a mystery for us as well, which I think, or hopefully, contributed to the growth of the characters throughout the season. Oh, absolutely, has it hit you that it's out on Amazon Prime? And it's interesting because you know they drop a few episodes when it launches, and then you know week yeah. by week after, and you know the landscape of that is changing. Some there's binge culture we saw with Lock and Key, and now there's right. the week after week. I mean, what do you think about that kind of landscape of of how stories are being kind of presented to the audience these days? I'm curious what you think about that. It's a good question. I think I think you can make valid arguments for any delivery architecture. Um, you know, I think that I think that people are made, have made now that we're heading back into a, a, a weekly episodic release. Uh, if you're seeing that come back to a certain degree, I think that's in part people missing the community experience that comes from uh, uh, you know the tension of having to wait, of wanting something and not being immediately satisfied with it. Uh, it builds a, a kind of community experience that can be satisfying in its own right. Um, so it's, I, I don't know, has anyone, 
has, has there been a show that's done this sort of hybrid release? Like I know <laughs> you did last few, summer. I think I yeah. think now the norm is they kind of two or three um are like en- enough to hook you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But then it's just like it, it it's interesting too, right? Because we get like I get screeners sometimes and I'm watching it right. sometimes bit like the way it's not supposed to be watched right like I get have you them. seen the whole thing i have not seen the whole thing i've seen the first uh, five episodes um right. which are amazing and it, it kind of has but again this show is is a good one to wait week by week because you want people to yeah. talk at the dinner table about who it is and right, everything right. It, it it works there i think <laughs> well it, and it's it, there's something nice about not uh not squandering it all in one go about, yeah. uh, you know, hoping to, to extend the meal to a certain degree. Yeah. Is it um, cool that you've been stays... able to do both things too? Like lock and key, right? It all drops. Right. And then immediately right, yeah. everyone's like, Hey, give me more. Like, <laughs> well, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing, Peter, how like the, the day after a release, most of the questions like on my Instagram are, <laughs> are from, from fans are like, so when's the next shit coming? <laughs> and it's like <laughs> and it's a little i mean that's not what everybody's thinking but i think that's uh maybe what the people who are more given to interact with you are thinking but yeah. uh which is great i love that people are enthusiastic to, to to want more and it's certainly um a satisfying indicator that we can have both something's though. connecting we can have the week by week and we can have the binge i don't see why yeah, we can't have yeah. both of them <laughs> i say i know what you do uh, what, I know what you did last summer season two. We should do like a once a month kind of thing. Just, <laughs> we make it a year long experience. But it's interesting because Mare of Easttown on HBO with Kate Winslet. I mean, that was the show that it was like right. every week, every Monday morning because it dropped yeah. on Sundays. Everyone spoke about it. Yeah, like everyone. Right. And it was like this anticipation of like week by week. You know That's what I so mean? Fun, right? Yeah, it was yeah. absolutely. It get, it get, you know, there there are there are definitely people who will like consume it all on the first day. This mm-hmm. allows the rest of us to, to catch up. Oh, absolutely. For it's wrap for up, us slow pokes. Before yeah. we wrap up um the interview, I mean, takeaway wise, I mean it's it's out there, people are seeing it week to week. When they get to see I know what you did last summer, the series on Amazon Prime Bill, what are you hoping they get out of it, takeaway wise specifically? Uh I hope they get a good time. Yeah. I hope they and I hope they get a bit of a scare. I hope their their bellies hurt a little bit because they're grossed out. Um, you know, it's it's a uh, uh, <laughs> spooky season, right, Bill? I mean, it's, it's spooky it's season. It's Halloween. <laughs> We're getting dressed it's up. So, there's a chill in the air. <laughs> dark earlier. Uh, you know, there's something about there's something about getting really dark in a way that doesn't cost you much yeah. that helps i think the 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 costly feelings of darkness inside you know there is a, a weird kind of uh pressure valve that gets released when you uh indulge in some more upsetting realms of experience that are ultimately not harmful so yeah so what i'm hoping is that i know what you did last summer is a highly therapeutic release for the trauma the collective international trauma of the past year and a half uh, for sure no that that say it loud that that's that's great <laughs> um <laughs> bill thank you so much for coming on pop alternative i really enjoyed chatting with you likewise peter thanks very much so i know we did last summer on amazon prime they could check it out and where do people follow you on social media to keep update with everything uh i got twitter and instagram uh bill oh you have I- yes you have twitter I, I, I know. <laughs> oh, yes, you know better than most. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, uh, Bill Heck, they'll find you, right? Bill Heck, yes. Yeah, absolutely. This, this, this has been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You can catch Bill Heck, and I know what you did last summer, streaming on Amazon Prime. Until next time, this is Bill Heck and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.